key challenge for policymakers and for funders in infrastructure today is the fact that um, probably 75% of the infrastructure which the country is looking to see and which is in the national infrastructure plan over the next five or six years is going to have to be funded by the private sector. Now the private sector are not going to fund uh, if they see the risks as too great or if they see the policy issues as uncertain. So the government knows what it wants but unless the government can present certainty of policy then it's going to be difficult to raise the money to fund the infrastructure. The benefits of having an independent infrastructure commission are essentially to seek to create a greater certainty around government policy. Uh, it's government uncertainty of policy which is one of the biggest problems facing industry, facing investors. With an independent infrastructure commission placing its proposals before parliament, parliament then debating them and that then becoming a policy which is established by parliament rather than by individual ministers, uh, you create more certainty around long-term policy making. Well, the two countries which we uh, studied in my report to look at international comparisons were particularly Australia and uh, Singapore. Australia has had an infrastructure commission now for about six years. Uh, it is fundamentally a federal body uh, which looks at Australia's long-term infrastructure needs. It then assesses the proposals from individual states against those needs and recommends whether they should be taken forward or not if it believes that the state's proposals recognize the overall uh, requirements of federal government. In Singapore, they take a 50-year view of long-term infrastructure requirements. Uh, they study that every 10 years and then they create 10-year um, policy programs for individual infrastructure sectors reflecting that 50-year program. And it is that proposal probably which we are closer to with my own proposals um, go going forward. Well, a classic example would be, in fact, the uncertainty around solar energy, the fact that government uh, set out uh, subsidies for this, people started to invest, companies geared up, and then within three years the government uh, changed the policy on subsidies and immediately the private sector stepped back from further investment and actually started to lay off people. So it's a classic example of what is needed, which is greater consistency of policy making, greater uh, consistency of approach to subsidies, because at the end of the day, you are um, not going to get uh, infrastructure investment if, in fact, the, uh, the investors cannot see continuity of policy. There's no doubt that, in fact, uh, politicians of all parties recognize the importance of infrastructure for all sorts of different reasons. Uh, the area where you could see greatest certainty probably is in rail. Uh, but the interesting thing about rail, of course, is that it is largely um, funded um, through public sector um, support as a consequence of the regulatory regime which sits around rail, rail investment and that's the area where you can see the, the greatest certainty. We've seen the go-ahead for Hinkley Power Station so we could expect that to start uh, moving forward but that only got the go-ahead once there'd been a long-term agreement between the government and the investors over, sub over the uh, takeoff prices for the electricity in the, in, in the future. So, uh, and roads is the other sector which is 100% public finance where you could expect to see some, some certainty. But the key challenge is that uh, apart from roads and apart from flood defence, everything else is in the private sector. And, and somehow or other, politicians from whichever parties have got to find ways of, uh, in a sense, striking a more certain bargain uh, with investors to get those other sectors moving.